Welcome friends! Previously I have done a video on how to make a DIY ROM switcher for the Amiga 500 and 2000. It covered how to prepare ROM images and burn them to a 27C800 EEPROM. Check my channel for that video if interested. Now I recently acquired an Amiga 1200 and discovered something different. There are two ROM chips. Apparently EEPROMs of that era are 16-bit wide chips. And for the AJ machines to have 32-bit wide ROM access, two chips are used, each with half of the data from a single kickstart image. AGI kickstart images are 512K in size, so split between two chips, that's two 256K images. Normally, a recommended direct replacement for a 256K Amiga EEPROM are the 27C200s. However, these are hard to find, so instead you can use the 27C400 512K chips. You just have to fill up the other 256K with data, and everyone seems to use the method of simply writing the same 256K of data twice. So in this tutorial, we will be using our licensed Amiga Forever ROM image for the Amiga 1200 to make two ROM images and burn them to two 27C400 chips. If you purchased Amiga OS 3.1.4 from Hyperion, you may notice it already included two ready-to-burn ROM images for the A1200. So if you are watching this video to learn how to burn them to the ROM chips, you can skip past the ROM manipulation section of this video and go right to part 4 where I demonstrate writing to the 27C400 EEPROMs. As previously stated, we will be using two 27C400 512K EEPROM chips. I will be performing this procedure using a Windows 10 PC. The equipment I will use is the GQ 4X4 programmer and the ADP054 adapter. These are available on Amazon. Check the description of this video for the link. I also recommend a UV eraser because things never go perfectly. We will use the GQ4X4's included software called USB PRG, so make sure that you have that installed. To split the ROM images, the software everyone seems to recommend is WinHex. However, WinHex is expensive if you consider that we are only using one of its features. But don't worry, I got your back. There is a free command line utility that will do the job. It's called SRecord and it is available here. I will put a link in the description. It comes in a zip file. You just need the sric underscore cat dot exe program itself. For this example, we will copy this executable file to the desktop. The only other thing we need is an Amiga 1200 ROM image. I am using an Amiga 1200 3.1 ROM image from Amiga Forever. If you have Amiga Forever installed, the ROMs are located in C, Users, Public, Public Documents, Amiga Files, Shared, ROM. The name of the file is Amiga OS 310 A1200.ROM and I'm going to copy it to my desktop where the srec underscore cat program is located. Now that we have all the tools we need at our disposal, the first step is to split our single 512K ROM image into two 256K files. We are going to split it into even and odd word images. Press the Windows key and type in command prompt and press enter to open up a Windows shell. 
and we will just change the directory to desktop where all our files are. Now type the following command to make our odd image. and type the following to make an even image. We can see our split ROMs now on the desktop. The A file is the odd words, and the B file is the even words from our original kickstart image. More on this later. Their file size should be exactly 262144 bytes but we need them to be 524288. So we just need to double them up by using a method we call in the programming world concatenate. To do so is simple using the Windows copy command. Type the following in the command prompt. and then do the same for our B file. Look at the properties of the two files and they should be 524,288 bytes in size. Install the ADP054 adapter into the GQ programmer. It goes in this orientation and insert it in the socket so the extra pin slots on the base are all on the top like this. Now plug the GQ4X4 programmer into an available USB port and start the included software USB PRG. Once the software has loaded and checked for updates, click the device button and find our chip using the search box. 27C400. I'm using an AM27C400, so I will pick that. Next, load our A file into the software. and click the buffer tab so we can see our ROM image contents. At this stage, if you are using Hyperion's already split and swapped images, skip the following buffer byte swap procedure and simply burn them as is to the chips. But we are using our unswapped Amiga Forever 3.1 ROMs, so we need to byte swap each file before burning. Go to the top menu, click Command, and select Buffer Byte Swap and we can see the buffer has changed. Now we need to insert our first ROM chip. You can see the software says we need the adapter and it shows what orientation to insert our chip. Now we will insert our chip as shown with pin 1 on the top and the extra pin slots above that. It's always good practice to blank check the chip before writing.
Once the blank check has passed, we simply click Write and wait for the process to complete. Now you may encounter errors writing to the chip, and that's why I recommended you have a UV eraser on hand. Simply throw your miscreant ROM in there and wipe it by selecting the maximum time on the dial. Once you have a successful write, mark the chip A temporarily. Now we will load our B image. Byte swap it as before. Put another blank chip in. Do a blank check and write. We are done. Here we have an open A1200. We just need to remove the existing ROM chips. These are the factory 3.0 ROM chips. The question is which chip goes in which socket? The sockets are not even visibly marked. Well, our A chip is for the U6A socket, which is the bottom, and our B chip is for the U6B socket, which is the top. Because there seems to be different terminology for distinguishing these chips, let me clear things up. The top socket, known as U6B, is for the chip that has the even words written to it, and is also known as low. The bottom socket, known as U6A, is for the chip that has the odd words written to it, and is also known as high. Sometimes people call them A and B, sometimes even and odd, sometimes low and high. Oh brother. At least now you know what matches what. So when you go to insert the chips, if they've never been used before, the pins are usually spread out and need to be bent in. To do this, simply rest each side of the chip against a hard surface and bend the pins inward as a group. So when you go to insert the chips, you may notice that the sockets are 42 pin and the chips are 40 pin. Just make sure the spare pins are to the left, and the notch on the chip should be on the left as well. Now all that remains is to power up the Amiga and test it out. I like to power it up with no disk or hard drive so I can see the appropriate kickstart screen. However, on any Amiga that has a hard drive controller but no hard drive attached, there is a delay, and the Amiga 1200 is no exception. In fact, the 1200 seems to take forever.
there we are, 3.1 ROMs. Let's load from our compact flash hard drive to see a vanilla Workbench 3.1 boot. Great, that was fast. Now let's test a game from Floppy. I'm using a GoTech here because the floppy drive is faulty. By the way, I sell these in my eBay store if you are interested. Link in the description. Well that's it, I hope you enjoyed this video, see you later friends.